you want to come home and see my diddly bow? <laughs> mm, okay. That will get you slapped really, rather, rather quickly, I think. Hello and welcome to episode 29 of Number One Crude Mistakes with myself Glenn from Number One Projects, Havard from Behind the Mistakes and KJ from Crude But Efficient. Good evening. Good evening, 29. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been this long? Oh yeah. Back from the holiday, stronger than ever. Good Easter break, guys. Yeah, well, I'm I'm in the middle of mine, so just nipping back to work for two days and then off to more, uh, more holidays. So that's cheating. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. All right, that's enough from you. <laughs> yeah. the mute button. No, mute. So, Havard, what have you been up to over Easter? Nothing and everything. Um... I mean, as uh, parents to toddlers, uh, we just stayed at home. But of course, we spent every day doing something. So last night after the kids went to bed, we just realized, all right, we're going to work tomorrow. Do you feel rested? (laughs) (laughs) Nope. (laughs) So, I mean, it was a decent day at work today, but then, of course... At lunch, everything exploded, and then you realized that you have a two-hour deadline to finish what you should finish before Easter. And then, of course, we have now had also the the start date for the next phase, which you also have to plan for a kickoff and uh, make a lot of presentations mm-hmm. and material to get a a good start on the next phase. So, yeah, next couple of weeks is going to be a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm positive. Hey, it's summer soon. I mean, <laughs> is it? Turn the clock around. <laughs> Are we positive for the next two recordings with Hovard? Stressed at work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm all liquored up, so it's going to be fine. <laughs> Just ram straight through that wall. That's, that's fine. So you said you were going to uh, fill up on a gin and tonic before we started recording. Is the gin and tonic in your little travel mug there? Because that, mm-hmm. that is classy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Bought myself a new fancy Yeti mug. and It's, uh, it's really good at keeping the temperature. So a couple of ice cubes and a gin and tonic. It will last you for as long as you need. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went a bit more maker on my mug. I bought a Stanley one. No. You one of those that pink way. ones? No. no. My daughter's <laughs> got one of those big pink ones, though. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure. All right, Michelle, I'm off to work. And then he spent three hours queuing up to get the pink Stanley mug. <laughs> <laughs> You're just jealous. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I miss the old days when you could get lead poisoning from your drinkware. And now, of course, uh, Stanley has brought that back. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's one of those mugs in your household anyway. Of our, not in pink, though. Actually, yes, we do have a Stanley cup oh, somewhere. <laughs> 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 to be fair, it's not mine. <laughs> That's why I went the, the Yeti route. It was a, a silent protest on my end. <laughs> so I had a nice Easter thanks for asking <laughs> <laughs> it was my birthday on Friday yeah happy birthday thank you very much And uh, so how do you feel uh, 29 next big one next year <laughs> <laughs> uh, something very very close to that of 49 and yes it is the big one <laughs> next year <laughs> No, I get grumpier and grumpier on my birthday. I actually detest the day. That's why I normally keep pretty quiet about it at the time. I'm all right after the event, <laughs> but on the day I'm just grumpy, <laughs> despite my family's best efforts. <laughs> but it was nice. They uh, cooked me lots of meat, and which is generally nice to me, and bought me a few presents, so it's all good. <laughs> oh. So they seemed happy that you lived another year. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. I mean, that's all that counts. Yeah. 
also managed to get the uh, cigar box finished on Friday, which was nice. Cigar yeah. box guitar. I know you like a full description, both of you. And uh, then spent Saturday editing. Yeah, got my video yeah. out. It was a nice video. Yeah. Stop it. But, yeah. uh, but what everyone is wondering, how's the practice going? I've not started. <laughs> I've not put any time oh. aside for it yet. <laughs> I was thinking, should I record a clip of me just playing like the first four or five notes of dueling banjos <laughs> and then just, it's on. <laughs> go on, I got a second. You just sing the first five notes. I don't have the guitar. Just sing here, it. So. Just, just do the tune. <laughs> no, I'm not putting. I'll that do on it. Tape. <laughs> diddly, 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 diddly. I can practically play already. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like the guy in the movie, so. <laughs> and now I can take this recording and I can, I can tweak it into a song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've not had, uh, not had time to start practicing yet. We went to the seaside on Sunday. And I actually can't remember what happened on Monday. Ah, was it that fun? <laughs> to get seashells? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, just just went to the seaside just to have a day out with the family. It was nice. Weather was crap. Went back to work today. Weather's been lovely. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, go figure. But what's your plan with uh, practicing uh, the guitar? Is it, do you have a goal set? Or should we pick one for you? No, definitely not. <laughs> so it's going to be a teaser for people going to Maker Central. <laughs> yeah. Live on stage. They're going to be <laughs> busking outside. Yeah, live on stage. <laughs> Put you over, Colin. I'm coming on to play my uh, cigar box. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got, I've got no plan yet. I've got no goal to what I want to play, but... I'm just thinking a simple tune, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or something like that will do. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, maybe a bit could, more than that. If you, if you put the hours in, you can maybe make a collaboration with uh, Miss Bagnola. Yeah. She's attending, I say. So, yeah, so you can make a, like a combo hit, smash, mash up, whatever they're called. <laughs> actually, that's, that's actually a really good idea because I've seen her videos before and she can get family members just to play one note. And then she just edits yeah, exactly. that in, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. She can make, make a song. Just, just DM her. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually considering, I wondered if Steve could do that for me today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with a bit of editing, it just uh, I could just make it look like he, I'm playing and he's playing anyway, can't I? So. <laughs> well, yeah, that's yeah, just cheating. Could. Yeah, no, I'm not going to cheat. It's better if you just... Dung, dung. <laughs> Dung, and then you just have all the notes and then you just string them together to make a melody. <laughs> because then it's you playing. It's just really hardcore editing. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a couple of those videos and all right. I mean, the music you can kind of do really quick, but having to edit that video to match it afterwards. Yeah, that's not oh. fun. <laughs> I mean, it's easier to learn how to play. Probably, <laughs> probably <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Probably. <laughs> For Glenn, at least. Yeah. No offense. <laughs> not taken a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of editing, your latest video, KJ. Was that all done on DaVinci yeah. Resolve? Yes. Yeah? Yes. All of it. Did you find any benefits to using it? Um... May I don't. It felt like it perhaps was a better quality export than I'm used to, but it was a uh, high threshold to to get started because everything was uh, really weird. But but I mean, I could do everything I wanted to do. I just had to find how to do it. Yeah, and then I had a lot more options that I'm used to. So so at the end, uh, I would say. It was beneficial. I don't know why. There was a lovely video, and I really, I really liked the vent. I thought that was bloody awesome. That was really clever. But um, I don't know why, because you were using DaVinci Resolve, I expected some extra trickery in your editing or something. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> no, no, I'm still learning. And I, yeah, that's that's uh, way down the line, I think. Yeah, putting myself in your shoes, I, I would be quite pleased with myself just getting a video out through that through that software. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my next step is uh, is learning how to uh, use green screen in it. But hopefully that will be easy. Just a Google away. But who knows? Oh, God, where's your... If Howard can do it, then <laughs> I can probably too. Where, exactly. Where's your mind going to take us when you're on a green screen? <laughs> <laughs> that Apollo video is going to get a lot more realistic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was fine as it was. <laughs> I see there's a thing now that people just record themselves in front of a green screen and they just release that footage for anyone else to build yeah. on. So uh, <laughs> feel free to send a few minutes over and then... <laughs> uh, is that our next video trade of us <laughs> <laughs> presenting something in like uh, a bunny suit or something like that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> what made you come up with the idea for that vent and turning it into a dragon? I, I, I well, really I, did think that was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, well, I needed to to extend it some way, and then I thought, oh, well, I could just put a pipe on, but <laughs> that would look awfully phallic. It wouldn't look nice on a house. <laughs> I should pimp it out some way. But hmm. I mean, you could tilt it downwards. You didn't need to. <laughs> <laughs> Still, still. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, well, I got the, the idea for making some kind of dragoness gargoyle th kind of thing. Like what was someone commented on it? Uh, like one of those uh, dragon trumpets or horns yeah, they had in yeah, medieval yeah. times. Yeah. That kind of thing. So just, well, maybe you can make a ventilation pipe look kind of decent. And yeah, it looks yeah. kind of decent. And I, I, it's been really fun having people stop in the street looking and pointing and smiling. So then I feel like... <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah, and you should... Inside it, you should line it with some red LED or LED lights. And of course, you can use one of these... Uh high frequency fogging machines or something so you could have some light and smoke effects as well just on the push of a button yeah it was it was really i was hoping to get one of those days when the um uh, moisture in the air is is at the right levels it actually yeah. breeds smoke as it is so i was hoping to get some shots of the dragon breathing smoke but uh, sadly not so much uh, but i was thinking maybe put some uh a fabric streamers or something in red or, uh, <laughs> or something or some some lights or yeah some sound effects or yeah who knows but at the moment i think i have to uh, do some maintenance on it because the the epoxy did not hold up as well as the jb weld did uh, when the temperature shifted yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he so far it's lost three teeth <laughs> like one a month <laughs> I did notice on your video you cheaped out oh, I've run out of JB Weld I'll just use epoxy that'll be fine <laughs> yeah yeah, that came back and bit me quite severely but yeah <laughs> but it was nice to get it out and now that it's I felt kind of awkward posting a, a winter video in late March and now it's snowing again so it's <laughs> <laughs> it's right on brand <laughs> Not really minus ten degrees as I think it was when I when I shot it, but yeah. To, it to my mind, when I think of Sweden, it always just looks cold. I, I can't imagine it looking sunny at all. <laughs> so that's that's all good. Keep, you have keep, to come over in the summer. Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you got snow as well. Have I mean, all. it's it's the it's the it's the buffer, right? You have the cold winds from the east. The Russian tundra, Finland, and everything is just coming over the lake, and then, luckily, the Swedish forest kind of slows everything down. So all the snow, all the cold air, just slows down and drops over Sweden. So, yeah, we got the mountain it's range sunny as well. In Norway. Yeah, yeah, and you got the Atlantic Ocean instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we get the the warm current from the south <laughs> just washing <laughs> over our coast. I mean, it's a uh, 
It's a beach holiday all year round. <laughs> With a salty spray. Yeah. In the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always raining in England. Yep. <laughs> Felt like it last summer, KJ. <laughs> Everyone's miserable. Well, it's um, actually, it's been delightful today. I've been working in a t-shirt today. Very nice. With some roses. Yes. <laughs> now, I just stood next to the roses. I didn't actually touch them. I thought that was dangerous <laughs> enough after your words of wisdom last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might retaliate. <laughs> so you got some power going on, Havard. Yep. Yep. Actually got uh, the power running for the, the hell quarter. And then I realized... Ooh, I can actually connect my guitar to it and get some noise. So, uh, of course, that was enough for a video. So I just <laughs> published one before we hit record. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had time to watch that yet. Yet. Well, it's playing on my phone as we speak, but I'm not watching it. <laughs> <laughs> as, as long as I yeah. get the playtime, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Gave it a like, let it play through. I've done my bit. <laughs> But the really annoying thing is, and it's a bit of the same realization you do when you do the edit of the podcast recording, some sounds get really amplified when you're listening back to them. Because when I was like hooking everything up and uh, the 12 volts power supply has an internal fan and it's stated in the user manual that it only turns on when it gets hot enough, but that fan has always turned on from the minute you turn the power on. And it doesn't sound too bad, but when I listen back to the recording, it sounds yeah. 10 times worse. But I have to do something with it, so I'm going to opening open it up to see if there's a, some adjustment possibilities. If not, I'm just going to cut the cable and uh, hook up a larger computer fan that's not so noisy i mean it's not going to get that heavy use so I, I can't see it getting too hot so did it just did it when you tried it did, did it just <laughs> play through the amplifier or did it play through the recorders oh it just played through ah, the amplifier okay. so uh saving the best for last so <laughs> but that actually means that everything is hooked up and of course, I, I got this angle bracket for the LCD display. And of course, I got the wrong one. So I'm waiting for the, the right one in the mail. Should be be here by tomorrow. So I think this week I'm going to hook the computer and the screen up and just start programming it to get the valves for the recorders to work. And that is basically the last thing I need to do. So once I figure that one out, it should be fully operational. That's a... Is that step a little bit like me learning the guitar, though? Yeah, I yeah. think that's a... Or is it easier for you? <laughs> a one-to-one a one -one parallel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've started thinking, how should I make the collaboration video? So I, now I have a lot of ideas. So uh, I need to uh, try to find what is the best idea and of course I, ne I need to know that it works before i start pitching it <laughs> to sarah <laughs> but, uh, good thing, yeah of course when it's done i want to make the video and get it out there but of course uh, she being a busy musician um and given the assumption that she's still interested then it might take some time to get that in place so uh yeah Thing. It's going to be a, a vast array of teasers <laughs> leading up to that. <laughs> I think that'll be well worth the wait, though, won't it? I think she, you know, she's definitely going to help make the video, isn't she? Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, I, I have the. I already have the list for the. Not three point oh, but maybe two and a half, because I do want the mechanical bellows, just because of the aesthetics and. You can bring the entire unit with you without having the 10 meter hose and a, a vacuum cleaner going in the <laughs> neighboring room. 
But I also thought about making the pedal board where you can adjust the volume on the guitar amplifier and the pressure to the recorders with two pedals, like a guitar board. And it shouldn't be too hard to do. And I can, I can basically buy some pedals and modify them. But all right, then again, <laughs> uh, having the assumption that the recorders will work and it will sound half decent, then you're getting close to like having an instrument you can actually learn how to play. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have some practice uh, <laughs> alongside you learning to play the cigar box. Yeah, I'm going to need to spend some, put some time aside for that. An amusing uh, comment on that video. <laughs> Probably the most hate I've ever had, but it really didn't make much sense. The comment was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what was bullshit there. Did he not think I'd made it? Was he upset that I didn't? It didn't get played at the end. I just it didn't make much sense. I mean, when you give direct feedback like that, you don't have to explain yourself. I mean, you just uh, yeah, we, go in didn't there, like it. He didn't need to put the ball bit on. He could have just said shit. <laughs> <laughs> that I would have understood. <laughs> the bullshit implies he's been uh, deceived in some way, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's skeptical that you will actually learn how to play it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> As I said, I'm looking forward to part two <laughs> in the next couple of years. <laughs> we could plan for a Save the World concert or something. <laughs> we can write a hit, a recorder, a cigar box a combo. I like that. I feel kind of left out here. <laughs> so we'll get you a triangle or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ding! At the end. <laughs> I can rattle some chains, perhaps. Oh, good idea. Jiggle your balls. <laughs> <laughs> they should work as maracas so yeah. yeah it's a bit of a personal yeah. question KJ but where are your balls right now <laughs> hanging in the workshop okay <laughs> I can go get them if you want no 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 I believe you <laughs> I'm not saying bullshit <laughs> are they just decoration yeah yeah, yeah. not found a practical use other things. no practical use for them yet then no, no. I will. They will be great if I need to weigh something down, oh. I mean something hanging or something like that. But otherwise, they have no practical. No. How long is the chain between them? I can't really remember. It's like between a half a meter and one meter, something like that. Sixty, seventy oh, yeah. centimeters, perhaps. Mm, that's a bit long. I mean, if you shorten it in, and then you can just bolt it on to your uh, weed whacker. <laughs> that, should, uh, that, that should would make light work of uh... take some time spinning up and take some time spinning down <laughs> yeah but that's what you want you want the angular momentum to work with you so well i got the uh, the motor from our old washing machine maybe i could use that <laughs> oh that would be good. Hmm. <laughs> I had a much more tame idea, and that was you could use it to clamping edge banding down. <laughs> yep, I perhaps. see we, we have these balls that you put into the dryers to fluff up the, <laughs> yes, uh, the garments. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I mean, if you, if you just chug them in your dryer together with some garments and see what happens. That's a way to get them stonewashed. That are cool, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what you use when you're washing your chain mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, perhaps. So what's the next video coming out, KJ? What are you on to next? Uh, the next one, I've decided to give the, the table some breathing room to see if I need to redo the, the top or not. So the next video will be another gas canister video. Okay. Speaking of the of the balls, um, so yeah. Do we get a clue? We'll see how that goes. Uh, it's a more simpler, uh, <laughs> a simpler approach this time. Okay. Just putting the gas canisters on the chain as they are. No, no chains this time. No chain. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
and how's the heating table coming on? Well, I was working on getting this video done, and now I'm on the roll, but all the parts are basically ready, so I just need to screw the frame together and get the cement and mix that, so it's... But I'm... I was kind of bummed out because I was at an online marketplace and someone was giving away a table with the perfect oak legs. Um, right dimension, right size for this table. And then, of course, uh, they got reserved like straight off the bat. So I was too late to the party and then it was given away to someone else. And now I'm just looking to see if there's any other tables being given away that have the right kind of legs because I don't really want to waste uh, my uh, expensively bought uh, <laughs> oak plaque to make legs for it <laughs> before I know it works but uh, yeah can you make this any... weekend I'll do some casting can't you make some temporary legs just to see it look like, look like a table <laughs> or are you afraid that uh, those temporary legs will be permanent rather quickly I mean, that's, that's the biggest risk, I guess. And then I also wanted to, uh, like, dip the legs into the wet cement to make oh, an impression okay. of them so it was easier when you mount them to, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. But that's a, that's a minor issue. Just had a thought. It'd be cool if you could get some legs off a mannequin and use those as your table legs. <laughs> Yeah, if I only knew someone with mannequins. Yeah. <laughs> How many do you I need? guess it will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a tall table for you, but yeah. Uh, do you have oak mannequins? Because I'm, I'm trying to keep to the oak theme here, but... Uh... No, I'm afraid I can't uh, help you there. Oh, well, you know those um, wiggly men that you use for... The artists use them for getting the uh, body form right. <laughs> Wiggly man. Is yeah. that the <laughs> That's the correct term, isn't it? <laughs> I always thought you were talking about those floppy guys that car salesmen have that wave around <laughs> with a compressor. But yeah, okay, I, I get what you're talking yeah. about. That's more reasonable. Well, we went to um, when we were in Norfolk at the weekend. Um, we went into a antique shop and they had a full size one of those. It's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, is it, well, you said made out of oak. That's just made, made me think of it, that's all. But it was full-size wooden wiggly man. Very impressive. <laughs> sounds a bit oh. scary. I mean, yeah. it sounds horrible. Full-size wiggly like. man. I mean, you don't want to meet that in the dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, you're just waiting for it to start moving by itself and strangle you or something like that. <laughs> so going back to the, uh, you know, the air-powered things that you said the car salesman use, KJ. When um, <laughs> we were talking about you and the Swedish maker having a tickle-off the other week, <laughs> Michelle in business, that's what you both would look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be true. <laughs> it's closer to the truth truth that I would like to admit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't going to go down the <clears throat> instrument route straight a, straight away, but I got inspired. I'm, making an, I'm going to start making another instrument again. Oh, no. <laughs> do, do I have to make an intervention? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I think this is going to be the last one for a while. But it's got a cool name. Yeah, you said that for the last one as well. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Just another one. Just another one. Just one, one. more. Just one more thing I can't use. <laughs> it's got a cool name though. It's called a diddly bow. <laughs> it's just, just just by the name alone, you need one of those in your life, don't you? Yeah. Everybody needs that. <laughs> Do you want to come home and see my diddly bow? <laughs> that will get okay. you slapped really, rather really quickly, I think. Is that one of those red redneck basses kind of thing? It's just, just a... it's just a single string. Yeah. Um basically over a, a big Unlike a stick. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they sound fantastic. 
Depends on who's playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the video that inspired me put it through a distortion box as well, and it, it sounded a bit like um, some sort of weird electric harp at one point. Hmm. One of the things he was doing with it. Yeah, I'm sure Steel can make it work. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to try and learn this one, even though it's only got <laughs> one string. <laughs> Maybe where I should have started. Is that your inspiration? Trying to make a functioning instrument that he can't play? As a yeah. as testing his abilities. <laughs> How bad can you make it and still obviously being an instrument that should work, but he can't play it? It never actually occurs to me that he won't be able to play these things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean so so far he's yeah. he's beaten you if that was your yeah. goal. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that I must say it never crosses my mind that he won't be able to play it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get a new friend if he can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that might not be worth it. Then. <laughs> Speaking of friend, I, I felt after listening back to last week's uh, episode that we didn't say a proper thank you to Chloe for being on on the last last episode because it was it was really nice having a guest on, uh, and I feel like we should thank thank her properly. When she's not there, so it looks like we're just kissing up to her. Thank you, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> so we are making a gift for for our guests to bring to Maker Central. I think all of them are going to be there so far. So uh, <laughs> much. Well, not yet, James. But let's let's not ruin the surprise. Forget I said anything. <laughs> no. Oh, look, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was nice having a guest on. She did a good job. So yes, thank you, Chloe. Yeah, we we need someone to to rile us up once in a while when we get too stuck in our stuck on our tracks. I think. Yeah. Who are we going to get next? I don't know. Hmm. Does any of our listeners have a suggestion? I was just trying to think who's not who's not got a restraining order against us. <laughs> well, that limits the options, I guess. Tricky one. Maybe maybe we'll see if the listeners have got a suggestion for the yeah. future then. We still have a few episodes left before we have to make a choice, I guess. Yeah. Until we're too downtrodden to <laughs> to handle it on our yeah. own. <laughs> Getting weird and tired of ourselves then. <laughs> we need someone to bring joy into our relationship. <laughs> Yeah, I, I read a quote the other day uh, that there are two kinds of people in the world. Those who are very strange and those you don't know very well. <laughs> and that felt... Yeah, that's probably true because everyone's weird in their own way. And and sometimes you need some new kind of weirdness. Yeah, that, that's, that's why I... Uh, I can never leave my wife. I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the weirdness level now that I, I can't start over with anyone and then have to keep this back for uh, X amount of years before I can like fully blossom again. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same. I couldn't, I couldn't actually imagine having to start dating and do all of that a lot again. How do you do it? I have no this, idea. This. <laughs> I've, I've said it to my wife several times. If you leave me, that's fine. Uh, and then, of course, uh, but I'm not going to start up. I'm not going to just roll back the time and start dating again. I mean, that's... <sighs> I I do get some uh, feedback from uh, some single friends and people in our circle that are out there on the market again. And nope, that's not for me. No. I mean, if I can't get this to work... <laughs> then I just all right. That that was it. I had a try. It didn't work. One of my um, friends is recently single, and um, I said to I said, "Are you just going to enjoy you know a little bit of peace and quiet and have some time on your own?" He's like, I'm "A little bit, but I need to find somebody because men just get really weird when they live on their own for too long." <laughs> 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 well, that might be true, but yeah, I don't know. How you would do it? I mean, uh, me and my wife had our ninth wedding anniversary just the other week, and we've been together for almost seventeen years. And I mean, a lot has changed yeah. 
since that time. And I mean, we met at, at university and I'm not dated out in the real world. I've only dated <laughs> when I was a student. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start. So no, that's not happening. I'm, I'm sticking with this one <laughs> to whatever. <laughs> No matter how bad it gets, I'm not going through dating. Yeah, it, so it, has, <laughs> it has to be really bad before. <laughs> I'm sure it'll never get that bad, Kate. <laughs> Seems like no, a lovely no, no, lady. Not, not, nothing points to it, but who knows what the future holds. I mean, I might get, go rotten. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, getting... Men getting single at old age. Uh, I, th- I think you're on about something there. Um it's going to get weird pretty fast. I mean, then it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're going to see the videos changing the how to install a bed in your workshop, how to program <laughs> your CNC to make uh, this uh, like white noise, uh, sleeping sounds. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little bit, you'd get a little bit more restricted in your making as well, wouldn't you? Because you'd have the whole house to fill the tools and all your makes and, let, let's let's just pray that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is kind of nice having that boundary between the workshop on your house, unless the things you make for the house, it's of course put some effort into it. But yeah, I wouldn't drag all my project into. I mean, I wouldn't have the hell quarter on display in my living room. I mean, it's <laughs> not the first week. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the first week. Yeah. You, I mean, you have got a massive organ behind you that you've dragged into the house. Yeah, but that's that's within the the realm of normality. I mean, it, it came from a living room. So I just Fair switched it's houses. close to normal, at yeah. least. <laughs> yeah. So is it normal that the hell cord has got to go back to hell? <laughs> that that's ooh. I mean, we have. There's a um, there's a small town just outside the biggest airport in uh, in uh, the midst of Norway, and it's actually called Hell. Oh, okay. And it yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course they they are struggling because people are of course traveling there just to take a selfie by the old train station, which says just Hell Station. <laughs> And of yeah. course, that that sign is being stolen like fifty, sixty times a year. So I mean, yeah. the the county just keeps pressing new like signs every week because there's just a matter of time before they have to send someone out to swap it again. And of course, I can do this in Photoshop, but it would be nice once I'm visiting my mom to just bring the hell quarter along and have like a photo session on uh, the train station there. Standing under the sign, playing like a busker, that would be. Yeah. <laughs> would you Would you go there when it's quiet and you know no one's around, or would you be happy doing that photo session? Oh, I, oh no, no. I, I mean, I would do it in rush hour. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that would be a nice idea to actually to fly Sarah in because that's the first train stop after the airport. So. I could just rig everything up and pay the airplane fare and she could just turn up and play a couple of tunes on the recorder and then have a coffee and then return back. That would probably be the easiest collaboration video ever. <laughs> what's, what's the idea? She plays the recorder and then you try and copy what she plays on your creation? <laughs> yeah, that, that has struck me. Or the other way around, well. perhaps. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing it would sound nicer when she plays it. <laughs> and she also has uh, an, a digital recorder that actually outputs MIDI. So I could actually plug her <laughs> recorder up to my hell corner. So she could play the recorders with a recorder. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of awesome, actually. Yeah. yeah, as good as she is, she's never played 25 recorders at the same time before, has she? Oh, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) The biggest issue is I I have, I think, I've got a couple of requests because I I posted in one of the earliest videos if anyone have any suggestions for a song they want to hear. 
and of course the one at the very top of the list is uh the titanic song uh, <laughs> my heart will course, go on yeah, yeah my heart will go on <laughs> And I actually know that she has played it once on her channel, like a tutorial. But if you do a cover tune and you don't butch the hell out of it, then you can actually get like a copyright strike and you get demonetized. And of course, this is going to be one of the better videos, probably. And then I don't want to demonetize it. So <laughs> then... But playing a tune that nobody knows about or that you have written yourself, it's not going to be the as hilarious. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to find a workaround on that. Yeah, I mean, you should do like a, a, a short series with famous tunes after that instead. Then it doesn't matter if they get get stricken the, the same way. Yeah, I was going to think, since it's going to be able to play MIDI files and there's some there is a million of them out there. I was thinking of just making a, like a jukebox video where I just load them into a playlist and then you shut them down. Because people is just interested in the best bits of every song. So you could just make yeah. a mashup and then just play that. <laughs> and do some themed uh, videos instead. The romantic one, the heavy metal one. The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then of course every Christmas there's the Christmas yep, list the Christmas that's version, uploaded. So all the and of course all the traditional Christmas songs are so old that they are now open source or free to to play. So uh, yeah, so I'm guessing the Hellcorder Christmas uh, playlist is going to be like a tradition in many a home for the <laughs> Jingle next Hells. generations. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just playing all the songs that has hell in the title. That's, I mean, that's an album in itself. The Hell Quarter album. <laughs> I would call it Hell Quarter One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the beginning to Stairway to Heaven always sounded like the recorder to me. Yeah, that's probably a good one as well. Yeah. Who is that guitar? No. No, that's some kind of flute. Yeah. But I don't know if it's a recorder. Sounds recorder to me, but might might be a yeah. recorder. I'm not gonna yeah. Google it. Well, it killed the conversation, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we we're giving our listeners time to think and Google for themselves and now they know more than we do. <laughs> they probably knew more than I we did before Google. <laughs> probably, yeah. I just instantly fell into the rabbit hole thinking about songs with hell in it and other ideas I could. Yeah. The only time I felt ooh, making some kind of music uh, instrument or something playing music is when I watched the Tesla Orchestra videos where they use Tesla coils and flamethrowers to make music. Oh, wow. That's bloody brilliant. <laughs> you should... I'll put a link in the description of the uh, episode, but just Google Tesla Orchestra. They do some great, great things. Yeah, Super I've weird. seen some videos. I I really want to build like, uh, I think a lot of people have done it. And now even the Blue Man Group has done it, like a big PVC <laughs> a pipe rack where they yeah. use like paddles to slap on them. I yeah. really like that percussion sound. And I really want to build one, but I know I can't play it very well. And knowing the price of these PVC pipes and the bends and everything, those are going to be very pricey <laughs> when you build a full-scale one. Yeah, and you want to build it big as well, and that takes up a lot of space. Yeah. So that's also... Maybe you should the... buy a 3D printer and print one. <laughs> full-scale. <Yeah>. A miniature <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure it scales properly, but yeah. Just build it bit by bit. <laughs> you can still make it big. Not sure but, that but, will be economical. It'll work out yeah. so much cheaper <laughs> printing your own. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen... I had a phase where I was really looking into 3D printers, but 
if I want one, I want one that produces something with a high finish that you can use it, but that's too much money at this point. And even the, the mid-priced one, they, they still have these layers to them that you need to sand and do a lot of work on to make them look pretty. So, yeah. you know, so, uh, so the resin I'm put ones. that on hold. So the resin ones. Yeah, the, re the resin ones, but they are expensive yeah. you... and you need to cure them. You need a lot of paraphernalia to make that work. Yeah. You need a separate machine for the curing, don't you? If you want to make it nice, yeah. I feel like, for me, I th I think I've come to the conclusion that a 3D printer is not something I want. It's it's like a boat. You want a friend with a 3D printer instead. Someone who <laughs> likes exactly. it and can do all the stuff and knows how to calibrate it. And Yeah, it's, yeah I'm not just interested. What tool are you interested in, KJ? What's next on your list? That's a good question. Yay! Did a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't help having a good question unless you can't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I think angle grinder. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly where my mind was going. <laughs> well, I was thinking, yeah, it's probably a a, a turbo plane for the angle grinder, uh, so I could try some power carving. Yeah, I think that would be it. Yeah. Because I, I don't feel like bringing something big into the workshop and trying to rearrange it and make something fit. So that, that rules out a CNC or a laser. Uh, I'm not interested in a 3D printer, so and I don't need any kind of hand tools otherwise. So, so yeah, that's probably going to be the next Christmas present to, to myself, I think. Yeah, no. as it looks nice. No. I presume you're on to the what are... next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just waiting on uh, on the tax man to arrive. Um, <laughs> I just got my uh, tax papers done, and I actually overpaid on my taxes this year, so I'm getting a refund. And oh, nice. That is going to be my welder. But until that happens, then I need to do some preparations. Uh, and, of course... Yesterday was the first day of Easter with proper, like, sunny weather. So I just went outside and started whacking weeds and, like, preparing the the site where we did the uh, digging in, like, October and just sizing everything up mentally for putting a shipping container there. Still, they are on their way down, but they're still kind of pricey. So mm, maybe I should just prepare the area and save up for next year but I will see it's got to be worth getting the area ready just in case one drops into your lap one day at the right price yeah that's my plan as well and I'm going to spend a couple of days with uh, like a miniature excavator just uh, digging some trenches um, leveling off the area and so on and removing some root stumps and so on so uh, everything should be prepared well, that sounds like fun Love a bit of digger action. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's going to be in the two <laughs> best days this summer, I guess. So uh, of course I'm gonna I'm gonna take two holidays in the middle of the week doing that, so I can be alone without having to worry about the kids running around when I'm doing well semi dangerous things in a slope <laughs> yeah. on a rented digger. <laughs> the last time I had a digger, I taught my daughter to drive it and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good fun. I mean, it's and for the money, it's worth it. Just rent it for a day and just move dirt yeah. from one pile to another and back again. It's, it's really easy to get a hang of. <laughs> There's actually a um, a park, um, like an adventure park for kids, not that far away from here, and they have uh, several mini excavators tethered to the ground, and the kids, <laughs> you know, with within safe distance, so they can't hit anything, and the kids are allowed to just go and play on those. Oh, That's really great nice. fun, yeah. I thought you were going to say that there was some adult, uh, adult par part of the park where you had some diggers <laughs> and tractors for the moms and dads to play around while the kids were on the other one. That would be a good business idea. 
just an open field and yeah. three, four of these mini excavators and some uh, small, uh, like these uh, motorized wheelbarrows and a bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, That's everything you need. I think insurance wise, that might be difficult. <laughs> well, I mean, you just have to call it like an adventure park. I mean, there there is probably a way to get around that. And then you can sell it as... Uh, do you want a couple of hours to yourself going shopping? Leave your husband to us and we'll take care of it. <laughs> and then, uh... yeah, I mean, it's great. I think I've said that I got that in my, for my 30th birth, birthday uh, to play around in a big sand pit. I had uh, four kinds of excav- excavators and one tractor that you got to play around with for like 30 minutes on each. Oh, nice. Or something like that. <laughs> uh, and there was there was some uh, kind of digger company hosting this. And though the, the 20-somethings that were keeping an eye on us, I've never seen people so hungover as they were. <laughs> because this was a, a Saturday. They were just sitting in the sun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go do that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> This is a good business idea. I mean, you don't even have to buy the machines either. My old boss used to ring up JCB and say, I'm really interested in buying one of these things. Can I get one on trial for a week? And then we'd get one over, use it for a week, and send it back. <laughs> no, that one was too big. Yeah. I need to try a smaller one. <laughs> no, that was too small. <laughs> we generally started out smaller and worked his way to the bigger ones, actually. But yeah. <laughs> I did actually look into buying one and then doing the work that we needed doing and then just rent it out until you broke even and then you could sell it off. But then again, my problem would be if, if I have an excavator standing in my driveway, it's like it's like if the only tool you have is a hammer, then your every problem is a nail. So I would probably see things that, all right, I need to uh, I need to dig here and I need the excavator for this, so I would probably just turn our entire lot into a big quarry, <laughs> <laughs> looking for gold or something like that. Hit a probably, few, yeah. Hit a few water and gas mains along the way. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have gas mains uh, yeah. in Norway, you know, so that's it's safer in that respect. But yeah, yeah same as my village. I know that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I do know that. The maps of this area are the old one, and they predate, of course, uh, any GPS uh, uh, equipment. Uh, and I do know that uh, the the main power cable for this entire like section of street uh, is running somewhere between me and our neighbors like border but we don't know how accurate the maps are so there is a there is an area uh, where you don't want to dig too deep without uh, <laughs> checking continuously if you see something <laughs> suspicious yeah going back to the uh, tool thing I'm we're still looking into a new computer at the moment yeah we've got um, I think I mentioned last last time that Shell had been in contact with a IT firm that her business uses yeah and uh, they got back and said we've got some really high spec uh, refurbished ones. We just need to figure out a price with a decent graphics card in, and they should be more than ample for you. So, just waiting for those guys to get back. Okay. Yeah. 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 Interesting. It's a bit of a ball ache waiting because I mean I could order one from Dell and have one here in two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then again. Last time I ordered a computer, I ordered it from Dell because I liked their homepage. You could really spec it out and choose what you want and not want, but they have become expensive. So I, I have a Dell now, but I, I bought that from a company who refurbishes old ones. Didn't seem too bad on their website to me anyway, but I didn't, I didn't look massively around. Nope. Everything expensive nowadays. Uh, I've actually... Uh ordered my um, uh, my birthday present that I got uh, this year from my wife uh, which was a tufting course so now I've, I've signed Ooh. up for it uh, so that's uh, starting in two weeks uh, uh, six uh, evenings 
course in how to tuft a rug. Oh, okay. So so gonna, I wondered what the so hell tufting make a, was. <laughs> so you're going to make a four by four uh, meter uh, artist rendition of a House studio Ghibli Castle? project? No, yeah. I will. Yeah, I would. I'm not that insane. Uh, <laughs> I, quite a bit smaller than the one Martina did. Uh, from Nerdforge for everyone. I actually wondering. saw a post from Nerdforge a couple of weeks ago like does anyone around us have a spare tufting gun? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it was yesterday they dropped the video and ah oh, that makes so much sense but yeah. I think I signed up for the course like the day before they posted that video so it felt like uh, okay yeah <laughs> I should I should make a video but yeah well, yeah. <laughs> I can't. Re- no one can outdo her in that. Now, that being said, I actually, um, I think it was unnecessary inventions who made a lot of rugs uh, after getting a tufting gun, and I, I looked into getting one, and I was like this close to ordering one online. But <laughs> yeah, it looks real fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I had a a search for a while if 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 one ended up uh, uh, not the cheapest one, but some, a decent one. But they're like five hundred quid or something like that. Yeah. So that's a bit much for something to play around with. And you'd soon fill your house up with rugs, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's <laughs> in in. We have enough rugs as it is, <laughs> as it is. I feel so. Yeah, it's going to be great trying it out at least. Because it look, looks really fun. Great soundproofing for your um, recording studio, wouldn't it? Just to tuft all the walls and the ceiling and everything. Yeah, something for you to try yeah. out, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. still a bit of echo in here, I know. <laughs> and that, then you could uh, you could tuft the the podcast logo, like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I actually looked in uh, because I have to decide what to tuft, and I looked at maybe the podcast logo. No, that's a bit yeah. too <laughs> complicated as the first one, I think. <laughs> maybe the second time I do a course or something like just that. Just choose yeah. any other podcast <laughs> logo with just the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure on these. Of course, the the larger. Like carpets with like the 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 regular or repetitive patterns, they are probably woven in some sense. But I mean, could you strap that gun to a CNC <laughs> and then just CNC yourself a tufting rug? <laughs> well, uh, yes, and it might be hard. I think the to get the correct pressure and. But that's just adjusting the set axis, isn't it? Yeah, but I then the I mean the fabric Make... moves when you push it. So then you have to calibrate for that. So it might be hard. I mean, this some um, sounds like something. Oh, what's that YouTube channel? He who makes extremely. I made this. Yeah, yeah. the puzzle robot and the basketball hoop <laughs> yeah. and all that. It sounds yeah. like something for him to go insane over. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll send him a DM if you're <laughs> running out of ideas. <laughs> make a rug. <laughs> so you um, you happy to be going on this course? Then is it something you would have chosen for yourself, KJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I've been I've been talking about that. I I find it intriguing, and I really I think it's cool, and I would would like to try it. So, so yeah, I'm really I'm really I'm I'm really excited of over it. Yeah. As your wife sort of put you on this course thinking, yeah, we're going to get a fantastic rug out of this for the house. And <laughs> <laughs> you've got something else in mind. <laughs> no, I think it was m- more like the the time that she, she got me the first uh, first lesson into getting my uh, motorcycle license. It is that shit or get off the toilet. Stop talking about it and do oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! I need to get him a tufting course before he starts getting into motorcycles and dangerous <laughs> stuff. <laughs> more, more than giving a course so he doesn't buy one to try it out, and then we're stuck with rugs all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. 
I know uh, my my first rug would be an outdoor one, just saying "fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think I've got much desire to make a rug. I'll be honest, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. To everyone their own. Yep. I have no desire to make a string instrument either. So, <laughs> I mean, it's nice that yeah. we differ in some yeah, things. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to go down that rabbit hole anyway, KJ. Once you once you start making them, you can't stop. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, it's a, it's like crack co- cocaine. It sounds like. I'm starting to wonder what I'll go back to after the stringed instruments. Yeah. What did you do in the before I don't times? Know. <laughs> you have to go back and watch some old videos. Like, what did I actually do? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed today my first video ever got another view today, which is quite funny. <laughs> oh. 12 minutes on making a sofa tray. <laughs> How do you feel about your first videos? Oh, it was a massive achievement for me, so I'm all right with it. I mean, it's a little bit cringy. I couldn't, there's stupid things I couldn't do, like move the text. When I had a text to the video, I couldn't move it from the center. Didn't know how, so it's, everything I write is just in the middle of the page. <laughs> so you felt that you've, uh, you've come a long way as an edit- editor as well. I think so. Yeah. I like to think so. My hairy That's arms good. aren't in the shots as much as they used to be. And... <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Maybe that's why people are watching. You're just waiting for the arms. <laughs> Okay, I think we can wrap up now, guys. <laughs> Before we go any further. Yeah. On hairy arms and tufting rugs, we end this week's episode. <laughs> nice and cozy. We'll see you on Tuesday for a half pint. I'll now play you out on the cigar box. Bye. Bye. Bye.